Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unusor Education. Um, let's continue talking about implementation of certain aspects of mathematical logic in electronics. Um, the previous lectures were dedicated to um, implementation of uh, binary uh, logical operations like logical OR or disjunction, logical AND or conjunction, and uh, exclusive OR uh, X or, um, which is uh, sometimes called addition by modulo 2. Uh, today we will talk about unary operation, uh, which is negation or inverting, not operation, not. Okay, so obviously not operation has only two different arguments and the result of the operation is not zero is one and not one is zero. Not true is false, not false is true. That's by definition. Okay. <coughs> now, this lecture is part of the course. The course is called Physics for Teens, it's presented on unisor.com and I suggest you to watch all the lectures from that website because every lecture has um, detailed notes with pictures much better than whatever I'm trying to draw here on the board. Um, well, the site has exercises, exams, there is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens, which is, um, um, well, not the course itself, but whatever is presented in the course, the knowledge, mathematical knowledge, is mandatory to, to, to learn physics. Um, okay. Uh, yes, and the site is completely free. There are no advertisement, no financial strings. You don't even have to log in. Okay, so let's talk about implementation of logical not operation in um, in electronics. Let me start with not exactly electronic implementation. Here is what I mean. Consider we have the source of. Um, electricity. We have a um, battery which has plus and minus and uh, to the plus I will connect through some kind of a resistor I will connect my output point output. Well, if nothing happens, if there is nothing else on this schema the positive um, potential at this uh, terminal of the battery will be exactly the same as this one. So it's always one, it's always true, always positive. Now let's continue. What if I will connect to the ground? Well, here is what will happen. Now this is the positive potential, ground is uh, neutral, it's an uh, unlimited source of um, electrons if there is some attracting force which brings them out. So obviously this is positive, this is positive, and the electrons will go this way. Well, the current obviously goes opposite way, um, and there is certain uh, drop of potential. If this is, let's say, whatever, the 5 volt plus 5 volts, and this is zero, then you can actually, based on the resisting uh, properties of this resistor, you can calculate the, the current, but the potential in this particular case would be the same as this one, as zero, because the potential from here will drop to zero here. And that's what basically current means, and the current will go this way, electrons will go this way. So in this case, output will always be zero. So, if there is no ground, out output is always 1. If there is a ground, out output is always 0. How can I make it both ways? Well, very easily. Let me introduce a mechanical switch. So, if this switch is in ON position, my output would be 0, same as ground. If this switch is off position, my output will be the same as positive terminal of the battery, some kind of a positive. 
Now, the positive is associated with 1, and 0 is associated with 0, so if switch is in on position, that would be 0. If switch is off position, that would be 1. So we can just write it down. On, 0, off, 1. Now, if I will implement the switch electronically in such a way that on position corresponds to 1 and off position corresponds to 0, then I will have exactly what I need, from 1 to 0, from 0 to 1. That would be an operation of negation. So how can I implement the switch electronically? Well, we actually know what it is. We have learned about tryouts, right? So what's the scheme of tryout? This is anode. This is um, cathode. And it's hot, basically. The way how we uh, increase the temperature is, is irrelevant right now. But basically, yeah, there is some kind of a filament here with another battery which heats this element which heats the cathode. Now the cathode is connected to something. Now if cathode is um, now this is what I would just draw. This is this is the diodes if you remember, right? So if my cathode has negative potential and heated uh, and if anode has a positive potential and then since it's heated, there is an electron cloud here. We have a thermionic emission, and electrons will be uh, attracted to anode, and there will be basically the flow of electrons. If this is a minus, this is a plus, there will be always the flow of electrons this way, and the current goes this way. <coughs> now, what triodes introduce is a grid here. Now, if grid is positive, then it actually accelerates the electrons, because positive grid attracts, right? So it accelerates electrons. Well, some of them probably will hit the grid, but most of them will go through the uh, 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 openings in the grid and will fly to anode. And actually, if we will increase the potential, the positive potential of the grid, the speed will be increased as well, so the current will be greater, right? So this is a triode. Now, what if the uh, uh, potential on the grid is negative? Well, if it's negative, it doesn't really allow electrons. It reflects electrons back to the cathode, and there is no current. So using this grid potential, we can actually control the flow of electrons. We can increase it by increasing the positivity of the grid, or we can decrease it by going down to zero and maybe even to negative. Now, what if it's zero? Well, then it actually acts like diode in a way. <coughs> and if the anode is far away, sufficiently far from cathode, then zero potential will actually no, will result in basically no uh, electrons going to anode from, from the hot cathode, because uh, even if there are free electrons, but they're not really close enough to anode to, to be attracted, or, or if there are some which are attracted, it's very minimal amount. Not exactly the same as if my um, grid is positively charged. If it's positively charged, electrons are accelerated, and they will definitely go in a much greater amount to anode. So basically, um, changing potential from uh, plus to zero changes the flow of electrons from intense, when it's plus, to uh, almost to zero, when the grid is at, at zero potential. So that's exactly what we need right now. We need the switch. If this is on, which means it's positive, the grid, we have the direct connection. So if I will replace this with a triode, it 
if I will put plus here, if I will put plus here to the grid, there will be a connection. So there will be a connection. The electrons will go and the potential of the output will be exactly the same as potential of the grounding, which is zero. So plus, and plus is always associated with one, will be converted into zero. So this is my input. Input. So if input on the grid is one, which means positive potential, the grid will increase the speed of electrons and electrons will go to um, anode from cathode. There will be a straight connection and the output will be the same as the ground, which is zero. <coughs> because this resistor actually prevents uh, potential to be completely um, uh, delivered to the output point. So electrons will go this way and then this way and obviously we can calculate the parameters of a triode and this resistor in such a way that basically we have the same um, potential here as here in case my input is um, is one which means positively charged here. And if the input is at zero, so the grid doesn't really help electrons to move this distance from cathode to anode, and if the distance is significant enough, so very few electrons actually are reaching anode by, by themselves. You see, if it's just an electron cloud, it's somewhere concentrated around the cathode, and we need some force actually to bring it to um, anode. Now, what can be this force? Well, maybe we can increase intensity of the temperature that would increase the speed of the electrons, but they're still chaotically moving. So some of them will reach. That's how diodes are working, actually. They're very close. I know anode and cathode are close enough, and the temperature is probably higher. But if temperature is not high enough, so electrons are in the cloud, but not too many and not such a big speed of each of them, and they're chaotically moving around the cathode. It's the grid, actually, which picks them up if it's positively charged and accelerates to the anode. And if the grid doesn't do it, then there is practically no, um, uh, no movement of electrons from cathode to anode. So most, uh, in, in, in most of these cases, I mean, we can definitely talk about characteristics of this resistance and this uh, triode in such a way that since there is practically no electrons moving here, then there is no current. And if there is no current, the potential actually will be exactly the same here, and it will be positive. So zero here on the input will result in positive, which is one, on the output. And one on the input, which is plus, positive, will result in connection, and it will be zero at the output. That's exactly what we need to implement inverter. So input is a grid and output is this point connected to anode of the of the triode. And that's how the operation, logical operation nod, not, is implemented in electronics. Now again this is implementation based on vacuum tube triode. But again most importantly is the functionality of the triode that there is something which controls the flow of electrons. Uh, the same concept, the triad, can be implemented in semiconductor and transistors, and that's just a different implementation of the same functionality. In this case, my most important point was the functionality of the triad, which is basically working like a switch right now. So sometimes it works for, like, if you remember, amplifying the signal. The same idea, basically. Um, that's it. So the functionality is the most important. Um, all these uh, lectures related to implementation of logical operations, um, I was actually presenting using the old um, vacuum tube-based um, uh, construction of the diodes and, and the triodes. But it's irrelevant because what we were using, we were using the functionality. 
and we can definitely implement the same functionality using much better technology, contemporary technology of semiconductor integrated uh, schema, etc. circuits. Well, that's it. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. There are, again, a little bit better pictures than whatever I draw. Um, and, uh, and what else? Basically, that's it. Thanks. Thanks very much, and uh, good luck.